What's up everybody, it's Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment tutorial video. What I'm gonna be doing with this video basically is just showing you guys how to create some groups inside of Pro Tools. This is gonna be a real quick, simple, fast video. I'm gonna try to get it done really quickly, uh, but I just kinda wanna show you something with creating groups inside of Pro Tools and actually how it can be useful. If you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Also, I'm sorry for being late on these videos. As you guys know, Christmas just passed up as well as New Year's, so I definitely needed to dedicate that time to my family as well as myself. I really enjoy my time off. Now it's time to get back to the videos. I will be hitting you guys with a lot of tutorials inside of Pro Tools, uh, quick keys, you know, just different things that you can do inside of Pro Tools as well as some mixing tips to go ahead and make your song sound professional. Also, so if you haven't checked other things out on my channel, I'll also build computers, do a tech review stuff, and a lot of other things. So make sure you check out my channel and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to go ahead and put on my trusty, my trusty headphones. I actually hate mixing with these headphones, but when you can hear yourself, you sound like a radio professional in this young five fine microphone. If you haven't went to go see my tutorial or my review on the actual five fine microphone, be sure to go check it out. I also have a, a review video of a Tonar Q9 microphone, USB microphone. They're both 50 bucks, very affordable, but just to have this USB microphone that I can plug in and go makes things really, really convenient for me. Also, another thing, if you don't know, I am recording my audio through the voice meter software. So if the quality sounds low quality, it's because I'm basically playing it through the voice meter software at a lower sample rate and not the highest quality. So just keep that in mind. All right, so basically in the process, what I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys is, this is a session that I have here from a very talented artist in Phoenix, Arizona. Shout out to Sylvia. Uh, she is definitely a talented artist as well as songwriter. This is a song that we worked on uh, here in my recording studio. So we were able to get the song arranged. Uh, we were able to get the song, the vocals recorded and just went through the whole process of mixing, mastering, etc. cetera. Uh, we, she will be putting out, a, I believe, an EP or album. Uh, she has a few songs done already. I'll be sure to share her link inside of my Instagram description box or my YouTube uh, description box, and you can go ahead and go follow her. All right, so in a process, this is the actual song that we worked on. So let me just go ahead and play just a little bit of it. All right, here we go. All right, so that is the song so far. Um, this song is already complete. It sounds great. Um, I definitely will be uploading a higher quality version of this song, but this song sounds amazing. Every song that she's done so far sounds great. All right, so let's get into the important stuff. The important stuff for this particular uh, video is how to do groups inside of Pro Tools and how are they useful. Now, this could be a more advanced video, but I'm just going to try to keep it really basic for the people who are just starting uh, Pro Tools. So this is going to be more for the beginners. Uh, but if you are advanced or you know, you've been using Pro Tools for a while, you may not know about this feature. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. Uh, so in the process, let's say that I wanted to go ahead and work on some particular vocals, let's say here. So what I'll do Say if I wanted to create a group, I have a lot of groups down here already created, as you can see at the bottom. Um, I'm not gonna worry about changing those, but if I wanted to group some particular vocals, let's just say if I wanted to group everything, this is what I would do. I would click here and I would 
click, let's say, just these four vocals. So I will hold down shift, click, and shift, click four. And that's going to highlight all those vocals. That means that all these is going to highlight it. So in the process, what you want to do is go ahead and hit control G. Control G is going to create your group. And once it brings up the group, it's going to ask you basically, what do you want everything to be assigned to this group? And what do you want to control with this group? So in the process, it's going to have edit, mix, edit, mix. And it's going to here is going to say the available tracks that you can have. And this is going to tell you what the current group is inside of Pro Tools already, ones that I've already created in the process, right? Okay, so uh, what you want to do is some of the things that you want to link, uh, that you want to link within this group is mute, solos, send mutes, and send levels. That's basically going to say that all these are going to be grouped and everything within this group. If you hit the solo button, it's going to solo it together. If you hit the mute button, it's going to mute it together. If you have the sends mute uh, as well clicked as well as the send levels, then it's going to be able to allow you to control all these things at the same time on each one of the tracks is going to do the same exact thing. Okay, so for right now, I only want mutes and solos. Here is going to say the ID. The ID, if I wanted to give it like group, you know, G or just whichever letter, you can pick an actual letter. And the thing about this is in the more advanced video sessions, I'm going to show you that you can actually hit certain keys and it would actually uh, toggle that group on, on and off whenever you need that group to be toggled on or toggled off. In the process, I'm not going to worry about it right now. What I am going to do is just name it and I'm going to put YG. I'm going to name it to YG. That's for YouTube group. Okay. And I'm going to hit okay. In a process, if I go ahead, if you see all the ones down here, it's letting us know which one of these groups are already currently on and which ones are currently off. So in the process, if I just cut all these other ones off by clicking them, it means that the only group that I have enabled right now is going to be the one that says IG. That's the most important one right now because that's the one that I'm using that I just created. Now watch what happens when I hit this group. So YG is um, engaged right now. So if I hit mute, all those tracks that I selected, as you can see, they all turned uh, the orange color with the M in it for mute because I have those actually engaged or a part of the group. Now, if I hit solo, same thing. Only those particular tracks were soloed. So if I ever just wanted to listen to certain tracks, then I can just go ahead and solo that group or create a group and either solo it or mute that group. If I wanted to, you know, just turn the vocals up or turn the, vocal, the vocals down on each one of these tracks, then I would go ahead and do that in the process. So now what I'm going to do is just play that portion of it. How would you feel if I kiss you right here? How would you feel if I touch you right there? Right there. And if you can notice, it muted those groups and it's only and it muted those vocals and it's only playing the vocals that I have that are not muted or not in that group. OK, so that's how you would do that. Now, why is this effective? It's effective for multiple situations. I would say if you wanted to go ahead and control the volume level of each group that you create, well, that's a benefit. You create the group and then I will be able to control those vocals at the same time so check this out when i move this up and i move it down then it controls that entire group at the same time now i already have some automation on it already so as you can notice the vocals are actually um, the faders are actually popping back to the setting that i have already just because of the automation so check it out That's one way to control it. Another thing that you can do in a process that this could be very beneficial for is like I said, if I needed to control or go ahead and say if I needed to adjust the value manually or doing it through automation, I would just go ahead and click where it says waveform here. And then I would go ahead and click volume. Once I click volume, look at that. 
everything pops up at the same time. So I don't have to do it on the vocals, but I'm going to show you this right here. So if I wanted to go ahead and adjust the volume in one section, what I would do is I would click that particular section. And as you can see, it put four dots or like little keyframes to be able to control the volume. So if I did one right here and I use this tool up here, I can go ahead and move to that section and I can move that up and down and I'm able to control the volume level of those vocals. Okay, so that's very handy if you need to go ahead and uh, make some adjustments to any type of group that you possibly created in the process. I use it all the time. As you can see, I have it here in a session with a bunch of automation and stuff that's going on. And then I have all these groups here. It's very beneficial. Uh, in a process, like I said, I can go ahead and show you guys a lot more that you can do with that uh, before this beginner's video. That's just something that I definitely wanted to show you in a process. And the same thing goes for the sins. Uh, and the send mutes. So the sends and the send mutes, a lot of those send inserts, any of those things, we would, if I had those engaged, then I would be able to go in and move this fader or click the mute and it would mute all the sins at the same time. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's a very handy tool. And I recommend that all mixers go ahead and use that while they're doing their sessions and things like that. So guys, that was it for this video. I really wanted to keep it quick and simple. I really hope that this tutorial helped you guys out. If it did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Uh, go ahead and leave me some comments and let me know what you think. What kind of tutorials do you actually want to see in the future? Do you want to see, uh, you know, more advanced things? Whatever the case may be, I try to look out for everybody. So, like I said, hit the subscribe button. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Did this help you out? Is this something that you want to utilize in the future? And if so, please show me some love. Share this video with other people and be sure to go check out my other Pro Tools series videos so you guys can become an expert in Pro Tools. Thanks for watching.